The invisible war on the saints, what does that mean? Some people say, uh, you say you're involved in spiritual warfare. Well, what is spiritual warfare? Hey, I can boil this whole thing down to just one word, really. If you're involved in helping someone in spiritual warfare, you are exposing the lie. It's the only thing the enemy has to defeat you. You buy the lie, then he has you. We have already won. I was thinking about this recently. I uh, happen to be an Indianapolis Colts fan. I'm not sure why, uh, but I have kept up on their games. And uh, I was watching a game recently and uh, they were down 21 to nothing. And I had the utmost confidence. I watched that thing, ate some chips, drank my soda, and watched it with great joy. In fact, I got more excited as the game went on, even though we were getting uh, the fire beat out of us. But I wanna tell you a little secret. Uh, do you know why I enjoyed that game so? It was a taped game. I knew the Indianapolis Colts had made a great comeback and won the game. Now there's something to be said there. Can I say something to you in the game of life? Unless I, and you have been deceived by the word here, we have won the game of life. At the cross, Jesus Christ defeated Satan once and for all with his death. He saved you right there. If you're willing to accept that, my friend, all oh, you've got to be able to get your life together to the point where you say, God, I, I know I'm a sinner. I know what you did for me on the cross. Through his resurrection, he's alive. You're alive. So that's kind of how this whole thing works. What do I know? The enemy's been defeated. I know the program. I've read the book, Satan has lost the war. He will battle you all the way to heaven if he can, in any way he can, but he's already lost. What are you afraid of? If you were fighting an animal that had no teeth, your chances of survival would be very good. And yet that's exactly, you think that's why his roar is so loud oftentimes? I think it is, I really do. I, uh, some people say, well, get a hold of Greg Penn. He is an expert. Mm, no, I don't think so. I don't think there is such a thing, not in spiritual warfare. You can certainly be uh, up to tune and you need to be on how to, to word scripture and, and how to do battle with the enemy, how to understand the word, but there really aren't any experts. In fact, I tell people I am a synthesizer. You would do well to be one too. Synthesizer simply takes all these sounds together and produces one. I said before, when I first came under attack, when that girl called my home, that horrific voice, and a name called Abaddon came out, I wanted to know everything I could. I called all kinds of, I read 119 books for starters, and I haven't stopped to this day. I want to know what he is doing and how I can combat him. It is an invisible war, but it's still a war, and it's on you and it's on me. We need to help one another get a great victory in Jesus. So spiritual warfare, what is it? Exposing the lies. Throughout our presentation, we are going to change names and places and things to again, protect the identities of, of, of real people, just so that you understand. Uh, we have dealt with a number of people over the years and God has been so gracious in allowing us to help them, my friend. So what do we got going here? We have two real problems. You sin, you believe uh, the enemy, and uh, he takes your mind. That's one of the, that's one of the extremes, okay? The other extreme is that, hey, I'm not sure demons even exist or that they can bother me. That's one extreme. The other, just as valid is, there are demons everywhere, behind every bush. They're in my breakfast cereal. Both of those positions are not healthy. I think for a Christian, I've always said this, even before I started working in the demonic world, one big problem you and I have is we can't stay balanced. No, no, we go off on all kinds of tangents and it's easy to do. I've seen people in soul winning. I mean, that's all they're going to do day and night out there on the street talking about again, and it's important, right? You love a soul winner, I love a soul winner. that one of souls is wise, but I'll tell you again, Make sure your life is balanced. Make sure you're taking care of all areas, your own life, your family, your health, all those things that you can. Keep a balance. 
in Christianity, you can certainly read through the Old Testament well into the New. Your life and mine goes like this. Okay, I'm way up here, everything's going great. I'm way down here in the pits, I'm way up here. For some reason, we can't keep a balance. I would encourage you, please do that because they do exist, all right? Uh, and they're not everywhere in everything all the time and don't let them get you in that point. Here's the key. Nothing fills demons with more fear than the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. Rudy, I think what we're gonna do through all of this is uh, take the trash out. Get trash around your house. My goodness, we have a full house at our home. I'm telling you, it's always something. I drag those trash cans out every Monday night. One time we had something really bad in there and it was really interesting. I uh, get rid of those flies everywhere and then all of a sudden there, all the eggs came out of that. I grabbed the fly killer and all kinds of stuff and I was just spraying for all I was worth. I was so excited. On that garbage, I had cleaned out every fly and nothing was moving in those eggs there. Whatever. I thought until I went back out again and all of a sudden here they were buzzing around again. Demons are like that. There are different degrees of demons. I've actually had people talk to me about maybe getting rid of certain demons and leaving the others, if you can believe that. I'm serious. I'm saying, what are you talking about? But it's like when I anchored the news. One night on this news set, I'm doing the news and a fly lands right over here. It was on my ear or whatever, and it actually came around. The crew was just cracking up. It landed on my nose, and it was just an irritant. I don't know where that thing has been, do you? Therefore, you don't want it around. You don't want flies when you're eating outside or having a meal or even in the house. You don't want flies, but they're just an irritant. They aren't really bothering you that much, are they? On the other end of the scale, I was mowing the lawn, going along a rather loud lawnmower, riding lawnmower one day, and I didn't know it. During our travels, we were gone for a few weeks, came back to the farm and they built a, mad, a monster hornet's nest, just a few feet above my head. Now, I'm buzzing around there in the mower. That sound must have irritated them because I came under a real attack. I got terribly sick with all those stings. Ended up just jumping off the mower onto the ground, let it go out into the field, and uh, we were in serious trouble. Demons can be that way. They can be the flies that are just an irritant, or they can be the hornets, the really bad things that can ruin your life if you don't deal with them. So let's go back to my garbage. When I did my media series, very popular terminology and easy to remember is G-I-G-O. Garbage in, garbage in, garbage in, garbage out. Whatever's coming into that eye gate and ear gate, that is garbage and you'll spew it back out in one way or the other. Well, it's the same way with your trash. It's garbage and that's the thing that Satan puts into your mind. So all of a sudden I thought I had all of those flies and their larvae killed. They were back buzzing around again. I was just in shock. This thing did not resolve itself until we got rid of the garbage. One thing to have the flies, but until you get rid of the garbage, that's really a key. We're gonna bring you basically 54 categories during this series of areas of sin in your life. And let me just say this right now as a, a precursor if I might. You might think when we talk in terms of demons that uh, was that person involved in uh, Satanism in some way? Did they maybe uh, play all their life with a Ouija board? And uh, the whole list goes on. We have been in some pretty bad stuff along that line, so I will just bring you some of the things that we've worked in some rather difficult times with. But here is a real capper. I have been shocked to find out that some of those demons that have the strongest hold on the believer starts with unforgiveness and a bitter spirit. Can you believe that? Why is it so hard to deal with God in this thing and then to go to that one that we have hurt in some way and say, will you forgive me? You continue to harbor that sin, and we can think about it in something evil. We talk about, well, you're drinking, you're smoking, you're doing drugs, you're into porn, those evil things will bring demons right now. But you don't wanna think that that could happen because you have an unforgiving spirit. You become bitter toward your spouse or a brother or, or sister. 
or a brother or sister in Christ, it can really wreak demonic havoc in your life to not deal with that. And so I think it's very, very important that you and I kind of get a handle on where this thing is coming from and what can I do? What can I do? I'll say again, let me boil it down. What is spiritual warfare? It's just exposing the lie. Now here is my task, why we took on this project, and it's a lengthy one, but I think it's gonna be so very helpful to you in the days ahead. I want to warn you, I'm doing that. I want to inform you. I want to in equip you with the proper body armor, and it'll come from the Word of God. How do I do hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy, so to speak, spiritually? Because you are doing a daily battle, and you need to take each piece of that armor, put it into your, your life, and utilize it, my friend, to the glory of Almighty God. The enemy is ever-present, never quits, just like the flies, and is relentless. And you can't get tired or weary in well-doing. I've even told people many times, one of the important things is make sure that you are rested and make sure that you are nourished. Just use some common sense things. Uh, because again, I'm telling you, it's amazing what they can do and how they will uh, try to frighten you. I was working with a man, we'll call him Bob, who actually got a, a special uh, pass from the uh, nation of Canada to come down and work with me with the idea that I was gonna help him on some mental things. It was quite interesting. This guy was a Baptist preacher, a great soul winner, had built a church, had done a number of things, and yet he had some really bizarre behavior. And his mom, great concern, and she'd had done some study in the area of the spirit world and this invisible war. And she had heard of us. I'm again, not sure how that happened. I have preached in Canada, but I don't think there was an association there. She contacted me, asked me if I would help her son. I said, I'd be glad to. So down to Fort Wayne, Indiana comes Bob and his mother. And uh, it was really interesting. I called uh, about a half a dozen prayer warriors over to help me just pray and just be a part. They wanted to see what it was like maybe to talk with someone who uh, could have some spiritual problems. We were going to find out together. Allegedly, uh, he did. And again, what are we talking about? A soul-winning Baptist preacher with some bizarre behavior. Was it mental, do you think? Well, we had this woman come who just happened to be the first Fort Wayne female police officer, first one in our city. She'd gone through the ranks and was working now in sexual abuse, especially among children, very ugly. And I kind of told her I didn't think this would be really good for her. She was fairly new uh, in the faith and she came back at me and said, hey, there's probably nothing that you've seen that I've not seen, Pastor, and I think that I'm a big girl and I can handle this. And I said, fine. Come over and join us. Just be ready to pray. Make sure that you're clear with the Lord. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Make sure there's nothing there for any invasion or any trouble in your life. And I recall as if it were yesterday, by our fireplace, she had parked herself in one of my wife's antique oak chairs, other people on the couch and in easy chairs, and she was sitting there. And I also noticed, you see some of these things sometimes, catches your attention, she was rocking back and forth on that oak chair. Well, Bob uh, was actually dropped off by his mom and she went back to the hotel and he came in and well, it was just so normal. We we're just talking away about a number of things and I don't know how the discussion, other people were listening in, but uh, Bob and I started talking about the authenticity of the word of God relative to King James Version and other versions. At that point, I was the King James man, and he was so well versed on the NIV and other, th and it was a lively discussion, nothing hostile. We were just sharing back and forth. Somewhere in that discussion, as unbelievable as it was, and I'm just, a, I could reach out and touch Bob to the end of the couch, and I was in a chair in the opposite direction. Bob opened his mouth right in the middle of this Bible discussion, and out of his mouth was the roar of a lion. Not one that you could manufacture, not one where you could scream out, Rrr. no, it was a real lion's roar. Immediately, I saw this police officer go backwards in that chair and fall right on her head backwards. 
It was that frightening. My children that I had just put away to bed on the third floor, in the light of maybe this could happen, they came running down the stairs scared. It was that, well, the neighbors could have heard it. Again, Christian man, and again, you want to argue that he, you know what happened to him? And I found out later this was so strange. In trying to help a woman that could possibly be a witch, he developed a relationship with her and married her. And boy, all kinds of things went wrong in that dear brother's life. At one point, knowledge, and again, depend upon how you work against the spirit world, there's really two approaches that people take. One of them is called a power, a power, excuse me, encounter, that many say that's exactly what Jesus used and that's what you should use. He never talked and, and had discussion with spirit. He just attacked and said, come out of that person now. And they did. One, they need a body. So in the one case, we know that they went into a bunch of swine pigs. Remember that? They want a body. Many of us have adopted now, and you do any reading, and to me, it really is sensible. Rather than me being there helping you, imagine that I'm trying to help 100 people with demonic problems across the country. I could go at it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and never sleep. And I still wouldn't be adequate in helping you. Many of us have developed what is called a truth encounter. I share with you the Holy Word of God, my friend, in such a way that you are able to get self-help. Always be there somebody for you. I'll be there for you if necessary. You'll get information how to get in touch with me if you need me. I can perhaps put you in touch with someone in your area that's experienced and we're trying to get more and more men and women to assist us in this area. Just go through some training and, and have some kind of an idea of how do we do this battle in this invisible war on the saints. But if I can show you from the word of God, extracting truth from this, it'll be fantastic because I've seen many people who've just taken the sin test and have just gotten serious with God and everything has fled from them. We've had to go no further. Don't you think that would be a great idea, my friend, to be helping you or someone that you love dearly? You pray about that because that's our goal, to help thousands and thousands of people. And even with this video series that you're watching right here, just sit down, watch this thing, listen to the truth of the Word of God, and see lives change. Well, with Bob, we were having a, uh, maybe a power encounter in that we were actually talking to some of those spirits. This was in my church office. And in one case, the demon said, this guy is such a fool. He doesn't know that he's adopted. He thinks that the woman who brought him down here is his real mama. Wow, that really intrigued me. And again, I was new at all of this at the time. And so I contacted her at the hotel as the men were taking him back to the hotel. And I just said, uh, ma'am, and I called her by name, is Robert, is Bob your son? And there was a real pause. And she said, I don't understand. I'm asking you, did you bear Robert? Is he your natural born baby? Again, a long pause. And she said, no, sir, he is not. He was adopted. Why would you ask such a question? I said, because in our conversation we just had with the spirit inside of him said that he was adopted. I just wanted to see if it was telling me the truth. You shall know the truth. Now again, they're liars. Line up with the word of God to see again whether truth is coming out or not. That was just one instance. And sadly, in that case, you know what happened? There was an emergency call for mom and Bob to go back to Canada before we were able to complete our work. And uh, after that, uh, I lost track of him, which can happen when you're helping people. Various things can come up that they get out of your reach. And uh, in each case, it's troubling to me because I really believe that we were able to help them and did not have the opportunity to do just that. All kinds of experiences. We have gone through that thing and we try to play down, if you will, some of the more dramatic things. I mean, it is it, preaching one night, waxing eloquent against the enemy uh, at a Baptist church just outside of Fort Wayne, Indiana, country church. I really sense God's moving, but at the same time, I sense a strong presence of the enemy. And in that, somewhere, I was really giving it to him. 
and we heard cracking, and others did. And again, a lot of times noises will accompany these messages. And uh, lo and behold, looking up at the ceiling, the plaster was starting to break loose and people went every which direction. One little old lady never moved on the front and the ceiling came crashing down. A lot of it held together and slapped against the wall and then fell helpful, helplessly into the aisle. Wow, we knew he was present then, no question about it. I'd asked the little old lady, I said, man, you are some brave gal. I want to compliment you, you never moved a lick. And she's got to tell you, it had nothing to do with bravery. I was so scared, I could not move. Again, experiences, things that have happened, absolutely. And it's pretty continual if you're going to be involved, as we have, with so many people in so many ways. But nope, don't get scared. He's not giving you a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Isn't that good? You need to continue to keep those verses going through your mind. And when the enemy comes knocking, you send Jesus, my friend. I'll join you in the next program. It's good.